On June 22, 1941, the Germans attacked Russia in Operation Barbarossa. Uh, the campaign was going very well at first, but uh, then the German boxy-looking tanks came across something that was far more advanced when it comes to armor. This was the Russian T-34 tank with sloped armor. Uh, the sloped armor enabled the T-34 to bounce off uh, German shells. Simply, the German shells could not penetrate its armor. Um, the Germans soon copied this design and came up with their own tank with sloped armor, which was the Panther. Other tanks and tank destroyers followed, like the Jagd Panther and uh, the Tiger II or the King Tiger. But how does sloped armor actually work? In this picture, you can see uh, the actual width of a tank's armor and the relative width. Well, you see, the relative width is what the shell needs to penetrate, not the actual width, because the armor is sloped. Therefore, the shell needs to go through much thicker armor than it actually is. In addition to that, the slope makes it easier for the rounds to simply bounce off. In the next picture, you can see that, for example, this uh, armor plate, which is 300 millimeters uh, in thickness, uh, can be made a lot thicker when it's sloped. So the thickness increases to 429 millimeters. Let's see how this uh, applies to a ceramic tile, which I will shoot at with my air rifle. I will be using the Sport S hunting expansion pellets because I believe there is a lesser chance of a ricochet using these pellets. As you can see, uh, at the lowest angle, there was no damage at all. In fact, the pellet ricocheted off of the tile, uh, whereas uh, at a slightly higher angle of uh, 40 to 50 degrees, there was damage caused, there was penetration, the tile broke, but just barely. It broke into only three pieces, which means that there wasn't a lot of force there. Uh, the, the pellet barely penetrated. Uh, but at 90 degrees, the tile shattered into a million pieces because it was very easy for the pellet to completely annihilate it. 